Now, work's taking place to get backing and support for a new Derby film. Yeah, I know, another one. Uh, the script for The Rat Catcher has already been pitched to a production company, so just how much work is involved in getting a film off the ground? Joining me now to explain more are director Tom Wadlow, a director of photography, Chris Newman, and producer Chris Wadlow. How are the three of you? Very good. good, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Not nervous about getting... Tom, I've got to come to you first. Not nervous about getting another <laughs> film. Off the ground. It's almost like you go right down to the bottom of the hill again, don't you? Because your last film was Wasteland. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you basically start everything from, from scratch and, and, and off you go again. I mean, the idea is that the more films you do, the easier it should get because people know about you or know that you work about your work. And, and so, therefore, you're not starting from a completely blank canvas because you've got a bit of a track record. But, yeah, essentially, um, it depends on the genre as well. The last film, Wasteland, was an apocalyptic drama so mm. it's very different to this next one so it's a completely different uh, group of people that we're looking to push the film to so I guess to some degree yeah you are you are completely starting again Chris what's the story to this one then? well it's um, we're thinking sort of uh, the feel of the film is very much Rambo or Bourne or Deer Hunter but it's about a group of brothers who as a, a bit of a bonding exercise they go away to a log cabin, but all is not quite as it seems when they realise that one of the brothers has actually got himself into a bit of trouble and it's followed them there. Sort of like dot, dot, dot at that point, yeah. isn't it? And this is what, what happens next. When you're looking at scripts to make the next film, what draws you in? To me, it's awful to say because filmmakers hate me for this... <laughs> But it's all about how commercially viable it is, how much money it's going to make. Um, obviously, I've studied the markets a lot. For me, this is a business project. So I have to go along the lines of almost, well, it is approaching it like a business, a limited company. Because nobody goes into making a film not to make money, do they? You don't do it for no. your health, do you? No, 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 no. And you wouldn't. I wouldn't advise that because you do go mad. Um, but, yeah, I think because we've we've obviously been to film markets as well as festivals and I've done a lot of research a lot of learning then there's an awful lot that goes into the decision making process behind picking up a script and running with it you see running with it this is what brings us into Chris very nicely you see already having a director of photography on a film yeah. I mean you must be sitting on your hands you want to get on with it <laughs> don't you <laughs> Um, at, at this stage it does seem like there is a lot of waiting around but there's um, quite a lot of product pre-production I need to do um, we've just been down to Surrey to look at one of the potential cameras we'll be shooting Ratcatcher on um, helping with a campaign and just doing bits and bobs here and there but yeah I can't wait to actually get down t and just get shooting it I sort of know what a director does and a producer yeah. we've got a, an idea director of photography um, well my main role on the production um, would be to control the camera um, set the lighting up and really control the look of the film so obviously I work quite closely with Tom with this um, to really bring his vision to life. So you have to have deep conversations with Tom and try and get what's in, in his head. Yeah. <laughs> not, not on celluloid anymore, but it's no. all digital now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, so, it's an interesting process because like, um, I'll talk about, well, I'll try and talk about how I see the film in my head and uh, Chris has to try and decipher the craziness that comes out of my mouth and figure out how, how that's going to you know, look on, on, on the screen. So we talk about colour palette, um, size of shots, um, whether we want lots of dolly shots or keep things wide and, is it, and things like that. Is it like, like storyboarding and those sort of things? Do you do much of that? Yeah, we've got um, a production designer uh, on board, uh, John Millwood, um, and he's he. I work with him on a in a sort of separate capacity, and we talk about the shots that I want, and sort of again the reason why I want some of the shots for certain sequences. He will then suggest shots, and so you know it's a collaborative process. Then I give those storyboards to Chris, who he, he then starts looking at and going right, how how are we actually practically going to get these drawn images mm -hmm. up onto the screen? So you start to learn more. Chris starts to learn yeah. more. Chris. Uh, You've got to be on your game because literally, as a producer, you've got to know, you've already said, it's a business. So it's all right. I mean, Tom can imagine thousands of people and you've got to turn around and go, can you not do it with four? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my job is very much about controlling the budget. So, of course, I mean, we, we've, we've just actually put out there about uh, a video all about sort of um, my role in terms of giving these guys 
um, a budget for different elements of the film mm. and then making sure they stay within it, you know? And that's really difficult because that's difficult in every business because you want to progress, but at the same time, you've got to be realistic and you've got to forecast, you know, how much is this actually going to cost me? And so much money gets wasted in indie film and we're so keen to not do that. So my rule is basically, and it's probably some advice for a lot of filmmakers out there, everything we spend has to be seen on that screen. I don't like wasting money outside of what can be seen on that camera. Do you adopt this in the rest of the things that you do in your life? If I walk around the supermarket with you, <laughs> are you adopting exactly the same process when it comes to the household budget? Yeah. I'm really strict with everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> people, people have ribbed me over the years because in personal life and in professional life, I have short, medium and long-term goals. Mm. And that could be anything down to bleaching the bathroom all the way through to actually, you know, building a house or something. So, but I think it needs that mentality. And that's why I'm very, very different to the filmmakers that we've got. Me, Tom and Chris, we're not anything alike. And that's, but that's where the magic is created, you know? And it's nice to have Derby people, again, making another film, whether it be around here or, or further down south. Uh, Chris... What's Derby like through a lens for you? Um, well, considering we've had two years' worth of wasteland, that's only really parts of Derby I have seen. Um, so I've not really seen the more beautiful side of Derby. Um, but that's hopefully something we're going to be exploring a lot more with Ratcatcher. Um, there's going to be some isolated um, forest locations, um, some really nice scenic beautiful places so we're going to hit up a couple of those places um in a week or so and get some really nice helicopter drone shots um but that's, that's the other interesting way. I mean, we had the, you know a guy that has a drone camera on the mm. program the other week and what you can now do tom you know you don't need that helicopter anymore do no, you no, you no, just no. need somebody with a remote control unit yeah. and off you go yeah yeah so we've we've got somebody that we're um hopefully going to work with on on this one coming up we're going to have a look at the kit uh we will be making a blog video about that and just get some really Hopefully, really good uh, shots of uh, of, of you know, moving around woodlands and stuff like well, that. Well, it was when we did Shrove Tide on, on the program, and, and the TV company next to us had this drone. It was a mm. bit like being in Robocop yeah. as this thing <laughs> just flew away and flew flew over the crowd. But you, you're getting more toys to play with these days, but they're getting cheaper, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like for the, the size of the budget that we're looking for, um, it's it's minute in compared to Hollywood uh, films, and and yeah, we're now being able to afford things like green screen and and all of these complicated things that several years ago were just way outside uh, uh, what we could what we could actually achieve realistically. Um, but yeah, with you know After Effects and and, and other programs becoming more readily available, and and actually the the quality of the, the image of the camera the, in the camera that you get, you can do these things at home, and, um, and it's great. I mean, like having this this helicopter unit is going to it's going to change the look of the film. I mean, uh, the downside is if you've got all these toys to play with, you then try and use them as much mm-hmm. as you can. And in actual fact, restraint is probably the better better way of using it because then it's it's not taking over everything. Because then suddenly people go, oh, here we go again, another helicopter shot. And, and it can you can be pulled out of the story of the film mm. because you're sort of over directing the film. So, Chris, this all falls down on you then as a producer because you know what budget you've got in your head, and it's it's the way that everybody is sort of trying to get things off the ground these days. I mean, it's crowdfunding, it's those sort yeah. of things which actually helps you as a producer to get more money in, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean. We, we are very, very concerned about the future of indie filmmaking in the UK. Now, there are a lot of articles have come out recently whereby, you know, the, the funding is being cut left, right and centre. There's no real effort being put into that anymore. Yet, the UK is known for some of the best films, best TV series that look like films. Mm. You know, you've got Sherlock. That's just outstanding. And how do we now make sure that next generation filters through? We don't know. So we have to turn to private funding and community funding in order to get these things off the ground. Do you think the success of Gravity will help? Because it's basically it's a British film. Do you think that might just funnel itself down? I hope so. I mean, you can never predict these things. But there are so many fantastic British films, and we've just received another email this morning about something else that's going live in September, which was crowdsourced, but it's with a massive director, British uh, mm. director... So I just hope that things, you know, that the the public out there are starting to see, well, hang on a minute, we all enjoy films. 
this is part of our wind down time on the weekend. Let's give something back or let's help these guys out. And it's not just us. There's lots of people out there wanting to do it this way. We can't give too much away, obviously, on here. But I'm assuming that you've got a a website. If you could put Rat Catcher in a search engine, you'll find sort of the way that that we can get down to to, to you guys and and how you're going to put this film together. Everything is on our website. And, so, um, and, and banging on to that, we, we mentioned Wasteland, which was the first time that we met, and you yeah. came in studio, and you went to Cannes, and it's been a great success. It's your calling card now, yeah. and it's still going after yeah. what two and a half <laughs> years. So, so what's the latest with that film that I, I would have forgotten by now, unless you know if you was involved with it, because it's been so long, hasn't it? Yeah, um, it's still going on. We're uh, still submitting to festivals. It's still it's been shown in a couple of festivals recently. Um, it was been shown in South Africa, which I think is about the f- furthest afield, um, and south of France, and um, a couple of other places. So, and um, obviously, because the festival season's quite big now, mm-hmm. so we're just submitting to as many as possible. But yeah, the thing with it, the, sub- the festival season, is that you submit, and then it's got you've got about three or four months to wait for the whether or not you're in. Um, so yeah, it does it does sort of rumble on for a, for a bit longer. Is it still your baby? Are you going to stop fiddling with it? You know, if you're tweaking it and just, oh, I'll just change that up again. I'll just do that. Can you not just leave it alone now? I, think I, I won't let him. <laughs> no yeah. more changes. I think, I think with Ratcatcher now being started, I've, to be honest, up until when you mentioned about Wasteland, I've pretty much forgotten about it. Um, mm. So it's, I think you need the next project to kind of push the last project to sort of like a, the door's closed on that mm. one when you start the new project. So. Well, fingers crossed, and we'll follow this through like we always do on yeah. the afternoon programme. So, Tom, Chris and Krista, thanks so much for coming in. Thank once you. Once you start turning, if you can still turn with the cameras these days, do you, do you call it turning now? Um, turning the camera? Probably, yeah. Why not? <laughs> it's all right, you're only the director, <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it. Uh, we'll follow this one through, and I'll see you out on set, all right? OK.